Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Clinical Perspectives, My Experience Using and Billing for the Moleculite IX Wound Bacterial Imaging Procedure. This will be given by Dr. Eric Lulov, who is Chief Medical Officer of West Boca Center for Wound Healing in Coconut Creek, Florida. Dr. Lulov is an author of multiple publications and has been a wound clinician for more than 15 years, and we're very excited to have him here today. Dr. Lulov has the following uh, disclaimers and disclosures. Thank you, Dr. Lulov. Take it away. Thank you, Dr. Rennie. So today we're going to discuss the problem, bacteria in the wounds that delay our healing. We're going to talk about the solution using the Moleculite IX device. We're going to talk about how to build for the Moleculite IX imaging procedure. And I'm going to give you some tips on how to navigate the reimbursement pathway. So let's start with why does bacteria delay wound healing? Well, this is pretty much all over the literature. This has been studied very heavily. Um, and we know that proliferation of bacteria results in infection and delays wound closure by increasing metalloproteases. It increases interleukins and cytokines in the wound, which create an inflammatory response. And it can actually inhibit and contradict application of advanced therapies and slow the rate of healing down and create a very chronic environment where the patient starts to have issues and provide problems for the wound clinician. So how do we actually use the Moleculite to detect bacteria? So the really cool part about this device is the fluorescent imaging provides information on the load, location, and extent of how much bacteria is in the wound. The device will detect bacteria levels greater than 10 to the fourth logarithmic. Because it's non-contact, it's a handheld product, and you don't need contrast, it makes it very easy for point-of-care bedside testing, and you can use it on any wound at any location. If you refer to the photo on the right, you can see where this fluorescent image is showing tissue being green, bacteria will be either red or cyan. Most species of bacteria, including gram-positive, gram-negative, aerobes, and anaerobes, may fluoresce red. When we see cyan fluorescent, it is most typical of Pseudomonas. This can be used anywhere. It's portable. It does need a dark environment, which you can also use dark drape if necessary if you're in a room, say a patient room that has a window that can't be darked out, or, and it requires no infrastructure. This isn't tied to the radiology department or the laboratory department. And as you can see on the right box, the sites of service, including telehealth, if you have a nurse on site, the home utilizing this device where you as the clinician can then see the image, certainly in the place of service office, certainly in the home, uh, assisted living facility, inpatient and outpatient campus hospital facilities, skilled nursing, and independent clinics. And due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we've been finding that the use of this in both the telehealth service, the home and the office have been ideal in keeping patients out of the hospital. So what does this actually do? And what is it during COVID-19, how has this actually helped? Well, because you're getting immediate diagnostic information of the bacterial levels in the wound, you can triage your resources, you can get better treatment selection and dressing materials, and you can monitor these patients more effectively on a week or biweekly basis or as frequently as you feel necessary as the clinician. And that fluorescent imaging gives you objective, evidence-based care at the bedside. Um, it enhances patient engagement and treatment compliance because they wanna see that their wound's getting better. And you can physically show the patient the image. So you get increased compliance to therapy. And that's what's really important during this time of crisis that we're living in right now. Fluorescent imaging informs my wound care practice, as you can see in the images depicted below in the slide, where on the left images, the patient measuring 36.34 square centimeters had red fluorescing bacteria on both the superior and inferior aspects of the wound. When the patient underwent surgical debridement, because of those image fluorescent bacteria, the following week, you could see a reduction of the wound size by six square centimeters and decreased imaging of fluorescent bacteria at the superior aspect of the wound. He was highlighting more bacteria at both the inferior plantar and inferior lateral aspects, 
And that just clued me in as the clinician that he needed additional surgical debridement technique and treatment, as well as exudative management. So how do you bill for the procedure? Well, these two new codes, which were released July 1st, are coded as 0598T, non-contact real-time fluorescent wound imaging for the first anatomic site. The 0599T is each additional anatomic site. If you do happen to have a wound on the same extremity, with two wounds, for example, you would build two units of the 0598T. If you had additional wound sites at different locations, say rear torso or another extremity, you would bill one unit each of 0599T. The 0598T will cross over in the APC hospital outpatient department to the 5722T APC code. How do you document the procedure? This is critical. This is probably the most important part about doing about the procedure as opposed to doing the procedure, because this is going to determine the reimbursement in a chart audit request. You're going to want to make sure that you have the anatomic site, the size of the wound, and the immediate appearance of the wound. You want to make sure that you are verifying the presence of infection and pathogenic bacteria or the absence of it as per the Medicare National Coverage Policy 270.1. You want to make sure you list the name of the procedure. Quote, non-contact real-time fluorescence imaging for bacterial presence of your anatomic location. You want to report the result of the procedure. Say, red fluorescing bacteria or red and cyan fluorescing was imaged on the wound. You want to be very descriptive about what you see. And you want to include the medical decision making. The treatment provided in reference to the treatment plan. If you had plans to put on a cellular tissue product, but the patient had so much red fluorescing bacteria that it precluded you from doing it, you want to document that. Or if they have the absence of bacteria, you want to document that the absence of bacteria is the reason for the application of the cellular tissue product at that time of service. And if you happen to use the dark drape, please also describe the positioning of the patient and the use of the dark drape in your procedure. So how do you bill? Well, we kind of already discussed the multiple units of the 0598T and the 0599T for the different locations. Just make sure that you are very accurate in what you're describing and what you're actually billing for. And you want to bill what you do. Tip number two is how frequently do you perform this? Well, it's based on medical necessity. If you feel that on a brand new patient with a brand new wound that's highly inflammatory, you may want to do this twice a week for the first two to three weeks to get control of the inflammation, to see if your treatment plan is actually slowing down the inflammatory process and reducing the amount of bacteria. You may feel that once a week is appropriate. It is always supported with your documentation and your images. And you want to make sure that whatever you do, that you do it appropriately. One of the nice tips with this procedure is because it can stand alone, you may bill for additional procedures. It may or may not be subject to multiple payment reduction. However, you can bill your surgical debridement of devitalized tissue or subcutaneous tissue debridement. Or if you feel that you have a primary laceration that can be closed, you can certainly use this to determine that the wound is closable with no fluorescing bacteria and then proceed to your late closure of wound procedure. If you happen to use the dark drape and or the supplies for the moleculite for the durable medical equipment, you also want to document those on your claim lines as well. If you do happen to have reimbursement questions, the team at Moleculite does have reimbursement specialists that are able to provide physicians and facilities for reimbursement questions of the actual procedure. In today's wound clinic in June of 2020, Lee Amir authored the description of the new Category 3 codes that were active on July 1st, and it's a very helpful article for both physician offices and facilities for accurate coding descriptions. And for more information, you may visit us.moleculite.com slash reimbursement for any further questions or information. Again, thank you very much for attending this webinar.